Okay, well, um, I'm not going to show you all the picks and clicks, but um, I thought conceptually you like to see uh, some pretty innovative techniques. So here's a, a pat on my back because uh, I'm pretty proud of uh, what I came up with here. So uh, here's the end result is a Civil 3D section view. And uh, what we have is an existing ground terrain model. I started out with that and what I needed to create was this design so this is a dredging project and uh, so you can see that we're just making a nice flat bottom here with like a um, either a two to one side slope or a six to one side slope or a combination of the two so um, what I had to start off with was the unfortunate situation where I was handed a set of drawings and this is what we have for the section if you take a look at this piece of information there, the tooltip shows up as a polyline. Okay, so it's dumb AutoCAD entities that I have to work with here. And what I wanted to do is to build a terrain model from this information. That's all I had. So this, I had, at least I started out with the uh, existing ground terrain model, um, and so I didn't have to recreate that. But uh, I was thinking, well, how do I get this section information into my uh, model because what I was thinking of is if I had those um, sections in there then I could just digitize a feature line along each one of these uh, critical design points here. So um, the clever chap that I am I said hey you know we can take this information and, and export it to a uh, an, an external file another DWG file and then just uh, import that into my drawing. So what I did, um, and this is the clever part, is I went to the UCS command and um, so what I did is I set the origin to, uh, you know, because here's the strategy is, is I've got an elevation at zero here and I know that my defined alignment in my design drawing is at elevation zero. So here's something where I can insert something along the alignment at the correct station and I just need to orient it instead of in the XY plane put it in the XZ plane so that's what I did here is I just said alright let's just uh, plump down my UCS here and uh, then I'll just say I'm going to orient it this way and in the XY plane I'm just gonna click like that okay so now I have my user coordinate system and uh, let me just do one other thing here uh, and this is going to be the slow part of it UCS and I want to set that to the uh, origin and uh, no actually I want it displayed as the origin UCS okay uh, that's it UCS icon thank you Kevin UCS icon and that's it okay so and now you can see it's a X, Y, and I want to change that to X, Z. So I'm going to do UCS again. And what I want to do is rotate this about the X axis. So if I type in X and then the rotation, now you think of it, here's the X axis here, and that's my axis of rotation. So if I want to lay this down, you know, in a, um, a rotation of a, a negative 90 degrees, you know, because you think of it as a clockwise rotation as being negative 90. So if I just do that, as I'm facing it sideways then I'll just put in negative 90 and now I've got XZ like that so what I'll do now is I'll just do a W block and so I won't go through the mechanics of that but uh, what I did is I just selected the polyline here uh, another polyline there just to see how it fit on top of the existing ground and uh, just because it was cute I put the little uh, uh, water level symbol there as well okay so then what I did is I came back into this drawing here went to the plan view and uh, I inserted a block and let me just show you that in a 3d view um, so uh, let's do a 3d orbit here here it comes the magic of technology all right, so now let me just uh, show you what this looks like. So uh, let me just uh, go to this surface property here, turn that off. 
There we go. So now you can actually see um, what I have for a section. So uh, what I did is uh, I did the insert command and I went out and I found that drawing file. So these are just individual drawing files that have nothing but these uh, two poly lines and this block in there. And so what I did is, um, it looks like it's going to hang up on me, so I'll just kind of talk you through it until uh, my system wakes up again. Um, I did an insert command. I selected, this is the uh, horizontal alignment, and this is the tick mark for station 200. So the insertion point is right here. It's at elevation 0 on the tick mark. And um, then I did a XYZ scale factor on the insert command. So uh, I did uh, scale factor x of 1, y of 1, but then I had a vertical exaggeration I had to compensate for. And so this is the, really the only way that you can squish down a vertically exaggerated section into a real world elevation is, uh, you know, the sections were plotted at 10 to 1 exaggeration, so I just put in 0.1 as the scale factor for the z on this. And so then what I ended up with is this blue polyline in the correct elevation at the correct station. And then I just did uh, feature lines to uh, connect the points. Now this uh, polyline, this 2D polyline that has some width on there, um, is actually just a 2D polyline at elevation zero. So what I did is I just um, did a uh, create feature line from object and I selected this thing and then I just moved it down to the bottom elevation because this is supposed to represent the uh, the bottom footprint of the dredge area and it happened to fit very nicely on these uh, endpoints here. So um, having the feature lines in their correct location then I offset the feature lines to uh, come up with a top of slope and that was a 2 to 1 slope here and then there was a 6 to 1 slope going out to the limits of uh, dredge. Now, of course, uh, when I did a, um, a grading object from this uh, top of slope out to the 6 to 1, uh, it didn't match up the uh, engineer's idea of where the limits of uh, dredge should be. So what I did is I just converted that to a feature line and projected it to the elevations of the existing ground terrain model. And then I took feature line, feature line, feature line, turned that into a surface, and uh, then I had a second surface. Now, there was also it looks like uh, uh, there we go it's all come back so I kinda talked you through that and made it quicker than it uh, uh, so you didn't have to suffer through all the picks and clicks alright so uh, now that I have a design terrain model made up of feature lines and you can see that the cross sections went out to here but there's no cross section defining this little curved area there so that's where the footprint came into play and I just basically used the elevations and extended those around to uh, get the bottom of the dredge area to look correct. So uh, then what I did is I went to the um, the sample line groups here and um, I basically just added that surface to the existing sample lines you know because some of this was built in Civil 3D and some of it wasn't so I just added another surface to that and then that comes down to uh, the original. Uh, I'll do my plan view here and uh, world UCS. There we go. So then, uh, you know, these cross sections, I just replotted these cross sections. These are the cross sections that uh, came from the original design. And uh, so what I did is I just recreated those um, using the um, uh, create section views multiple, went through that wizard. And uh, I also made a little volume table on the side here uh, just so I could verify that uh, this volume, say at station 200, uh, matched the volume here. So we've got like uh, 133 uh, square feet, 261 cubic yards. And, uh, you know, if you look at, oh, that's drawing one, there's uh, like 251. So I'm only like 10 yards off on that and uh, pretty close to the cut area. Uh, so I just did that to verify that, you know, it was pretty close to what the um, original design conditions were reported at. So uh, basically that's the uh, the trick that I used and even though you didn't really get the uh, pick for pick run through on that, I figured I'd summarize and make things short and sweet and you'd get the concepts down.